Before we begin today, please take note of what's on the board. We're trying to attract a large electronics coating company uh, just to the west of Rose State, so you all can get high-paying jobs when you graduate. And I'm going to be giving them a tour of the fab labs, so we will not start until 1130 on Thursday. Same time. Same time. End the same time. Those of you who feel you are being shorted uh, in being able to spend time with me are more than welcome to come over and spend time with me in the office. Uh, if you feel you would like to do that. All right. I had asked you to take a look at easy graphics and what we're going to do today is a lot of hands-on code to experiment with it which will lead to the assignment that you get to do through Thursday. So easy graphics is a package for creating and working with simple drawings. It is not the package that is native to Python but it's a package that's installed that'll do the work that we want to do and it's what the textbook uses. With this caveat, depending on what version of the textbook you have, it may or may not talk to you about easy graphics. So take a look. I believe the book that they had down in the uh, bookstore had the proper information in it. If you want to download Easy Graphics or you want to find out information about it for home, this is the website and this is out in the slide deck that's in the content folder for this week, www.easygraphics.org. Not a whole lot of, of information, a whole lot of tutorials. Uh, from all I can tell, it is used a lot with thank you, Java, not that much with Python other than by our authors for the textbook. So it's an interesting tool to learn with, but it'll teach you the basics and what you need to know. If you are interested in setting it up at home, we came in Saturday and checked the classroom, so it's up and valid here in the classroom. You need to copy easy graphics from the D2L download folder, and I'll show you where it is here in a second. And you're going to copy that into your Python 3.5 uh, library site packages. That's all you have to do. And it will then automatically install. And I've got a couple pictures for that. Uh, if you're using, and I, what, I, what did I want to say here? Oh. If you download it from the internet, you may very likely find out that it has the extension PYC instead of the normal Python extension. You don't have to do anything to the file other than remove the C from the extension, and then it will load absolutely fine uh, into your uh, Python at home. This is the folder that it's in, and Easy Graphics. This has the extension .py, so you can download it very easily and put it where it belongs. I put this slide in, so if you need to go and look where to uh, install it, it should be in your program files, x86 files, Python 3.5 lib or library, and then in site packages. And when you open the library up, you'll find a combination of folders and individual programs. You'll have to scroll down to where you find the site packages and then just pull it in there. There are not a whole lot of files in that site package right now. And I think, uh, exactly why it didn't work on your computer. Uh, and this information isn't... This way of installing things in Python as add-ins isn't talked a lot about, so it's something that you get to pick up from the class. Once you do it, um, a couple of errors that students have made in the past. Uh, first of all, you need to have PyCharm and Python closed. 
and install it, open them back up, and you'll be able to check for the easy graphics very easily. So we checked the computers in the lab, and uh, we'll be able to run it, as I said, today. One other point, if you have installed it in 3.5, and you also have, like I do, uh, 2.7, 2.9, and 3.1 on your computer. If you go back to those other files it, or other versions of Python, it won't run unless you put it in each of their site packages. So an indicator of why you may not be saying it. You may get it in the wrong position. All right, what I would like you to do is go ahead and fire up PyCharm. And we're going to start by putting in a very simple program. Then after we get comfortable with it, we're going to create a whole new program and do some drawing. As you're putting this in, line 7, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is actually importing easy graphics from the library. And we happen to know it's in the site package folder. And what we are pulling in is the graphics window. So when we use easy graphics with Python, it's actually going to create a separate window where we will write all our data. And you'll see that in just a second. If you're a slow typer, the slides are out on D2L. You can go ahead and type it in. Or if you're a speed demon and you want to get it all typed in, you can do it that way also. The next thing we have to add are two local variables, or actually one local variable, and then we'll set up the other. So line 12 is when equals graphic window. This is just a shorthand way for us to refer to that graphic window. And using the word when, you can use any variable you want to. In this case, starting off, it's kind of easy to use when for window. Underneath, once we get our window set, we can modify a variety of different things in that window. In this case, we're going to use the extension set title, and you can set the title to any name that you want to set your title to. So at this point, we have a window to display what we are going to create, but we then have to have a canvas to create it on. So that's line 15. We've created the window. Now we're going to create something that we're going to draw on. And the way we draw on this grid is using something called a Cartesian coordinate system, which means that the upper left-hand corner of our chart is 0, 0. The bottom left-hand corner is however large we got, want to make it. Footnote for you, this is the way your television set scans the lines. It starts at the upper left-hand corner and works down to the bottom versus a coordinate system would, uh, that would put 0, 0 in the middle and work out into uh, x, y, and z coordinates that way. So this is a Cartesian coordinate system that we're using. So every point will have an x and a y value. To draw on our canvas, very simple. In this case, in line 18, we're going to use draw a rectangle 
and what you see are four numbers that uh, declare two points that will draw a rectangle. This 4040 is obviously the upper left hand quarter and 100, 200 is the bottom right hand quarter. So Python will be smart enough to figure out how to display that. If you put that code in and ran your script without adding line 20, you'll see it flick on the screen for just a second and go off because that graphics window is only on the screen as long as the script is running. So at line 20, we want to put in the code win.wait, which means that the graphics screen then will stay open until we close it. Yes, sir. In our books, it's got uh, the coordinates for x, y, and then the, the lower corner are separated by spaces. And then up here, you've got no spaces. Which okay. Is, is your book talking about graphics or easy graphics? Graphics. Okay. We're doing easy graphics. That's what the, that's what the most latest version of the book wants us to use. Okay. So what, what you're seeing on the screen is what you're going to use. And quite frankly, this is a lot better graphics system than, what, than what's delivered natively with Python. So once you get the code in and you run it, you'll have a window open up somewhere on your computer that looks like this, and it'll have a square or a rectangle drawn in it. So you can go through and you can change the settings on that rectangle to see the different options that it draws, I'd encourage you to do that. And then also, let's add some of this material. Go ahead and draw your rectangle, then add line 19 that draws a line. You can draw it anywhere on the screen you want to. You don't have to use my coordinates. And then we can also draw arrows. Commas, you don't have to have spaces between the commas. All Python is looking for is a comma after the grid coordinate. And so depending on what coordinates you used, you're going to have a screen that looks something like this. And you can put your arrows moving in any direction uh, that you like. Just notice that the head of the arrow is at the end of the line. Some very interesting things that we can do, but there's even more than that. If you look at canvas dot and the fly up that comes out, we can do arcs, ovals, points, polys, polygons, rectangles. We can actually draw text. We can look at heights. Uh, we can hide items and, and create a variety of different things with it. So it's a very, very useful tool. Again, if you go out online and, and search for easy graphics, it comes up and says that's what's used in this textbook. So go figure. A little bit more information about um, easy graphics, and we're going to get further into it. Go ahead once you're done working with the file that we just created and create a new Python file. And what we're going to do is improve on the script that we just created. There are some ways we can make it better and we can add some color to it. So one of the things that we're going to use is one of the library functions that we learned a little bit earlier 
in chapter two in, as we looked at arithmetic uh, and the functions that are available there. And we're also going to talk about a locally defined function. Now we get into this in a lot more detail in chapter five, but we're going to use it to create some additional drawings as we go through creating a new file for ourselves. So if you have the file open, again, you can name it anything you want to. Let's start with this. We're going to have, we're going to open up Easy Graphics again. We're going to import the window. Under local variables, let's go ahead and create uh, our win, but this time we'll assign it a 400 by 400 size. And then our canvas will set up the way we did before. So from line 9, you can figure out that there is a default value for that graphics window if you don't enter any numbers. Line 14, now we're going to add some color to our background. And this would allow us to make pie charts, it would allow us to make bar charts, which they show you in the textbook, but we can also do some drawing with it also. So line 14 is going to set the background color of our canvas. And we'll look at the available colors in a minute, but we're going to use yellow for the background. Line 17 is going to set our canvas color. And we're going to set that to blue so we can draw on the canvas with that color. And then we're going to use a different tool this time. In line 18, we're going to draw an oval. And there are, co there are the coordinates for the oval. And of course, at the bottom, we need to have wind weight so we can see the object that we are creating. monitor it'll look a lot better. So the question was what other colors are there? And there are some predefined colors that we can look at. So each one of these you could type that name in the in the um, in the box and it would bring up this color. But along with this and, and that's not that's not bad. That gives you a lot to choose from. But then we can also find out that our colors are set up with the basic combination of red, blue, and green, the three primary colors. And each of those colors runs from an integer of 0 up to 255. So if we want to create black, we would use 0, 0, 0 as our value for the color. And if we wanted to create white, we could do 255, 255, 255. And so we've got all of the options in those three colors in those limits, 0 to 255, which actually lets you create an infinite amount of color. So if we look at the code for it, when we do set color, then we could include a value for red, green, and blue and figure out how our color would be set that way. And notice we can do that with the set color, the fill color, and set the outline color. So let's go back and modify our program slightly in line 15 and in line 20, and let's include those two colors in there that you would like to try. But here we've got roughly a rose state blue and a 
and yellow to take a look at. Back up? Sure. Whoops, went the wrong way. There we go. Take a second if you've already got your code running and experiment with the different combinations of numbers that you can get and the colors you can get on your screen. So again, basically there is what we created now. Let's go a step farther. Let's say that we don't want to go in and set those colors every time we type. We want to set up variables. So we could very easily add some new lines. Red equals zero, blue equals zero, and green equals zero. Uh, in the code that I wrote, it's lines 11, 12, and 13 is where I put it. So go ahead and add that to your code. And of course, when you do that, then you're going to also want to change line 18 or what will become line 18 to where you set the canvas background. Take a look at this code. What are we doing in 13, 14, and 15? We're setting up a random value. We're setting up a random value. So we're going to lose control of our color, but it's certainly going to make the screen interesting <laughs> because who knows what we're going to get. Now, before you start pounding away at the keyboard, what do we have to do before we can use random integer? We have to define it. We have to pull it out of the library, right? right? See if you can remember how to do that. And while you can put that anywhere in your code before you use a random number, normally you would put it at the beginning, right underneath our call to Easy Graphics. Is that also important for Easy Graphics? No. What, you're, what you want to have is from random import rand, and rand int. So from random, and we did that last Thursday or last Tuesday, I think. But we're going to go a step farther here in a second. First of all, this is what I had set up as I did the script and ran random colors. Kind of got stuck on mauve and whatever that other color is, and then kind of a, a blue. I left my yellow the same. But we could do a loop, but we can only run the loop once. So what we want to set up is a definition, and we're going to create our own function. Now, I think... We might have looked at this just a shade in boot camp, and we're going to really look at it in detail in Chapter 5. But line 9, 10, and 11 creates a function that we can use anytime we want to in our code. So what we have in line 9 is defined, and I just arbitrarily named it new color. You can name it anything you want to name it. When we do a function like this, we always have parentheses, and that first definition line always ends with a colon. So we create a definition. Now, this name needs to be unique, 
And keep in mind, we can call it any time we want to call it now. So it gives us a little more flexibility than what a loop or an if, if else, else statement would give us. Line 10 starts to perform the function that we want to do. So I want to create new value. I'm going to use my random integer and I'm going to tell it zero, uh, between zero and 255. Line 11 sends that value, the return statement, sends the value back to the line of our script that called the new color code. And so the way we would actually implement it is here. Line 16, and notice how we call our defined function, equals new color parentheses. Now, we know new value doesn't leave here. But when we say return new value, it'll take this value and plug it into red. It'll do it a second time and create a new random integer and plug it into blue, and the same with green. So any time that we want to change the colors on red, blue, and green, we can do that. But what's the problem if we use this code? Well, we have to use the red, we have to call red, blue, and green, and then if we're going to use red, blue, and green as our canvas color, we would have to call this again. It can be done, uh, but we still have the problem of every time we need to create a new red color, we have to, have to call it. So, why not just use this code? Set canvas color. We have to tell it that, it's, that the value coming back is an integer, but here we call our new color definition three times, red, blue, and green. And now, any time we want to change a color, we just make the statement for set color or set background, call our function, and we automatically get a new color. Go ahead and put this code in. These are some of the options that I got when I ran the code. So now it truly gets random. And what are the chances that we'll have the same color defined twice? Well, look at the number of colors we have when we pull our random numbers, very rarely. This is for the classroom class, not the online class, because they see the same video that you do in the classroom. But here's your assignment. I want you to create a flower garden using easy graphics. You must have a sky and ground. They can be whatever color you want them to be. If you're on Venus, I think the sky's purple. You must use the following code functions. The random library number function, a while loop, you can use an if, if else, or else statement if you think it's necessary. And I want you to use multiple colors. So I don't want everything to be the same color. So you can use the shapes to draw your flowers. You can have them come up at the same time or have them come up at different times as your script runs. You can do the sky, you can do the ground. 
So you can start today in the remainder of class. It's due Thursday at the end of class, and the way this project will be turned in is you'll give me your printed out code, and then you'll run that code on your computer so I can see what the result is. Any questions? Yes, sir. So does it, does it